Hey everyone, as you know, the coronavirus is obviously having a major impact on you know the country, on the world. It's rippling through the world and really disrupting industries, and it's clearly going to affect our Amazon FBA businesses. You know, maybe you had a product launch scheduled and you're no longer able to send an inventory, or maybe you're worried about the demand and you know, this recession that they're potentially talking about and how that's going to impact your Amazon FBA business. But before you give up or before you considering, you know, throwing in the towel and saying this opportunity isn't for you, let me walk through a couple of scenarios, a couple of things that I think might be going through your head during this time of uncertainty because these are things that I'm thinking about. These are things that we're dealing with within my business. And I just wanna share with you kind of my thought process before you give up on the Amazon FBA opportunity. If you guys are new to the channel, my name's Lamar. I'm a seven figure e-commerce Amazon FBA seller. I'm here trying to provide you guys tips, strategies, techniques, you know, different life principles that you can imply in your own business to help you become successful on Amazon and build a six, seven figure Amazon FBA business. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the coronavirus and quite obviously that impact that it's gonna have on our businesses and in particular, some thoughts that have been going through my mind recently and they're probably the same thoughts that have been going through your mind just on the impact that this virus is, is having on our businesses. And the first thing that I wanna talk about is a thought of I didn't see this coming. And this is gonna play quite a bit into macro forecasting because quite frankly, we could have saw this coming or we should have seen this coming. You know, two months ago when this was rippling through China, we could have predicted the implications or the impact that it was gonna have on the USA or the rest of the world. And the fact that we were so focused on restoring our supply chain. You know, we were so focused on making sure that production didn't stop. We almost forgot about what could happen if this actually did spread to, you know, the United States or the rest of the world. And quite frankly, I think the biggest takeaway in this category or from this thought is that we, we should have seen this coming because we live in a connected world and we need to become better at macro forecasting these different like world you know pandemics or economic changes we need to become better at understanding the implications for them and how that's going to affect us and our own business because quite frankly as i said we're living in a connected world now and one thing that's going on in one country is just gonna have a more compounding effect as time goes on or as things continue to evolve. Especially as a business owner, we just need to become better at predicting these events and the impact that that's gonna have on our business. So if you're worried or you're thinking to yourself, oh, I should have seen this coming, yeah, in an extent, we should have all seen this coming. We should have been preparing ourselves for a pandemic like the one that we're now dealing with and that we should have a kind of plan in place to deal with the situation. The next thought that you might be having here during the situation is, I see all these businesses closing, am I next? And this is a, you know, a completely understandable uh, thing to think about, you know, we're kind of surrounding ourselves, or there's a lot of negativity. There's a lot of um, economic, you know, worries. There's a lot of businesses that are closing, you know, just in my own, you know, home city here of Philadelphia, we have all bars, restaurants, uh, gyms, basically all non-essential businesses are closing. And you're seeing this constantly like being, you know, thrown around in the news or through the media, it's spreading a lot of negativity. And 
a thought that might be going through your head is, is my business next? You know, all, you know, all these other businesses are, are having to close their doors. You know, and it's very easy to start to just question, um, you know, the stability of your own business, right? You know, that, those have been thoughts that have been going through my mind. I'm sure that you're thinking about the same thing. Well, I have some good news here. E-commerce is resilient in this situation, at least. I mean, my sales have been going strong. We really haven't seen a dip in e-commerce sales at all. And in fact, I've seen an upward swing. It seems that you know people are now at home, they're worried about going outside, and the trend is that they're buying online, which is phenomenal if you're in the e-commerce or online business space, which is what the space that we're all in right now. So thinking or being worried about all these other businesses, I mean, it's insane. I have my cousins being laid off, my, I have friends that are getting laid off, and e-commerce is still going strong. Amazon is said to hire like 100,000 more workers over the next couple of weeks. The demand that Amazon is experiencing is unheard of for this time period of the year. So it's e-commerce is resilient and our business infrastructure is backed by one of the most highly resourceful companies in the world, if not the number one most resourceful company in the world. That's Amazon. Our infrastructure is reliant on Amazon. And you can be sure Amazon is not going to go anywhere anytime soon. They are thinking of how to um, take on this additional demand, really double down on the surge of sales that they're experiencing right now. So as e-commerce as a whole, and using Amazon as our backbone or our infrastructure is really becoming a, an advantage during this time of uncertainty. Now, I'm gonna be the first to say this here though, but depending on how long this lasts, right now the buying behavior online doesn't seem like it's changed much. You know, like I said, everyone's at home buying. However, as soon as people are laid off of work for, you know, two, four, six weeks, that's when we might start to see a decrease in demand. People are no longer gonna have jobs and then therefore not able to spend online. Right now we're kind of at like a weird period of time where everyone is still collecting their paychecks. You know, the government's gonna put out a stimulus package. So there's gonna be these things that are put in place to try to keep people spending. Um, at least on a, a minimum level. But if this goes on for you know three, four, five, six weeks, you know you can expect that demand to start to drop off. But by that time, we should also be you know working through this situation. You know, hopefully, four, six weeks down the road, yes, but de a demand might start to decrease. But we're going to see light at the end of the tunnel, and we're going to be working through the recovery. The next concern that you might have right now is around Amazon's restriction of, you know, sending inventory into Amazon fulfillment centers, right? So you might be thinking, oh, I can't send inventory into Amazon. And my point here, it would be that if, if this is a problem for your business, right? If, if, if not being able to send in inventory into Amazon over this two and a half week period, right? They, they stopped, non-essential items being able to be sent into Amazon between um, March 17th through uh, April 5th. And if, if that's gonna take down your business, then you have bigger problems going on than, than the coronavirus, right? You have inventory issues, and this should be a wake-up sign for yourself, you know, for you to look internally at how you're managing inventory because quite frankly, the ability or the, the ability of not being able to send in inventory into Amazon for two and a half weeks shouldn't take your business under. You should be keeping at least six weeks of inventory in Amazon at all times. And if you've done that correctly and you've forecasted correctly, you know, by demand swings or seasonality, you should be 
okay. You should be able to weather the two and a half week kind of delay or hold of not being able to send an inventory to Amazon. Of course, there's product launches and maybe you know, you're know you not completely familiar with seasonality and you know you weren't able to predict these, you know, these changes in demand. And that's just a normal thing of building an e-commerce business, of being um, you know, new into this industry or gaining that experience. And this was a good learning experience for you in testing your inventory control. So if you're really concerned about the impact of a two and a half week freeze on being able to send in inventory to Amazon and the disruption that's going to cause your business, I would say that you have a bigger inventory issue that you need to deal with uh, besides the coronavirus at all. The next thing that you might be thinking about or causing you stress in your business is not having enough cash. Okay, now this is a valid concern, right? Every business, you know, has overhead that they need to cover, especially if they have employees or, you know, we're spending a lot on different tools that we're using to just run our business on a daily, on a monthly basis. And as soon as sales drop off, you know, we need to be able to cover those expenses in some way, shape or form. And if we don't have enough cash on hand to weather the storm, you know, that can have a lasting damaging impact on our business. Now, I think it's best to say that we should have as entrepreneurs at least two, three, four months of overhead cash on hand as a reserve in the event a situation like this comes up. Now, obviously we're all in startup mode and you know we're reinvesting a lot of the profits and a lot of that excess cash uh, back into our business. You know, we, we are a inventory heavy business, so we are investing that cash, you know, quite quickly back into the inventory that we're buying. But the main point here is I think it's a good idea to have at least two to three months of a cash reserve on hand to cover overhead at all times, if not a longer period. You know, I've I've seen some of the most I've heard some of the most successful businesses out there have up to a year or two years of, you know, overhead uh, cash reserve. And, you know, that that's probably pretty tough for, a, you know, a, a business that's just starting out. You know, I wouldn't have been able to do that when I was just starting out in e-commerce. You know, now that my business is definitely a little bit more established, I'm able to keep a, a two, three month, uh, you know, cash reserve. And I would seriously think about that as you continue to develop your business as just keeping on this cash reserve to be able to weather the storm. The other point that I wanna make on, on, on cash here and expenses, finances, is are there areas in your business that you can you, you know, potentially cut back on? You know, it's a good time right now to go through our financials and just pick apart every single line item there and ask the question of, do I really need this? Is this helping me grow my business? You know, is this, you know, moving the needle forward? Is this a necessity? Because it's very easy to lose track of all these tiny little expenses that add up to a large sum on a month to month basis. And in a time like right now, you know, where we do have an online business and we can react very quickly to the environment, it's a good idea to go through those expenses and just see what you can get rid of to kind of like clean up your you know, profit and loss statement. The other thing right now that you should probably be thinking about when it comes to, to finances is, is cash flow. Now, I've been able to cut a lot of uh, really great deals with my suppliers in China. And this is probably a good time for you to examine uh, cash flow and just how you're paying for inventory. Are you paying 30% down and 70% on delivery? Or are you paying 100% on delivery? Or do you have payment terms set up where you're paying 30% up front and 70% 30 days after delivery? These are all different things that you should be talking with with your supplier, you know, that can help with cash flow and just keeping a higher reserve of cash in your bank account. The, the, the money management aspect of e-commerce can be extremely powerful on both the growth side 
and on the side of protecting your business in a time of uncertainty like we're dealing with right now. So make sure that you're talking to your suppliers and working out you know, any kind of um, payment terms or renegotiating the, the way that you're paying for your inventory just to you know, help at an uncertain time like right now. And the last point here on, you know, and the last point here that I wanna make about financials is that it seems like um, getting a business loan or different loans that they're gonna to start to roll out with are gonna have some really favorable terms. Um, I think that this is a, a positive thing for small business owners. So if you are in a crunch for cash or you know you don't have enough money to buy inventory you know maybe you've been covering overhead for you know a month or two and you're not able to you know finance your next inventory purchase there's going to be some good uh terms coming out for small business loans i would imagine over the next like a week or two so uh, now i'm not a, a huge fan of taking on debt but you know in a case where you know, you can quickly repay it or you just need a, an injection of cash, this is gonna be a good opportunity um, for biz, small businesses like ourselves to take on a loan if we need one. So obviously some of these things you, you know, would have had to prepare for beforehand or you would have had to at least thought about beforehand. And I think that the, the biggest thing that we can kind of take away from, you know, the, the coronavirus here, this event, is the learning experience. We need to understand how this pandemic is impacting our business and what we can learn from it. This is just another one of those, you know, swings in the roller coaster ride of being an entrepreneur, of owning your own business. This is no different than some other challenge that you know, we are facing or that we have faced or that we will face in the future. This is just one of those other things that either make or break you as an entrepreneur. So, you know, is COVID-19 going to kill my business? Of course not. Is it going to kill your business? I don't think it will either. You know, as long as you're putting these, you know, practices in place and you're, you know, continuing to evolve as an entrepreneur and you just realize that this is part of the process. You need to be able to take these challenges, deal with them, learn from them, and then move on. So in summary here, this is definitely not gonna kill my business. It's definitely not gonna kill your business and it's definitely not gonna kill the Amazon FBA opportunity. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. Please click the subscribe button, click on the notification bell so that you're getting notified when I come out with more videos all about Amazon and e-commerce. And remember guys, have a great weekend and stay healthy. I'll see you on the next video, peace.